few months ago, William Schneider Jr. arrived at the Caps Media Center with an absolute treasure trove of Ventura history. Bill's father, William Schneider Sr., was a highly respected teacher throughout Ventura. For years, his hobby was recording on camera interviews and family histories with fascinating people all over the county. Recently, his son, Bill Jr., gathered together more than 100 tapes from his father's archives and working here at the Caps Media Center has painstakingly restored these treasures. Bill's new series, called My Father's Stories, explores some of the very early days of Ventura County. Most of the videos were recorded 20 to 30 years ago. The people, places, and stories Bill shares are part of Ventura's rich history. Welcome to My Father's Stories. Bill, these stories are amazing. Really, really amazing. Um, and the fact that you're, the way your father put the whole thing together and the research you've done to tell them. So, who you got for us now? This is a geologist by the name of Gray Cavetti. He's a graduate at USC. Uh, he worked for the old industry. And he's gonna have a real short history of Ventura just merely the last 10 million years. He's gonna tell you about that. And we, what he's gonna talk about is um, the strata uh, and, and the local mountains that we have here. And you have to remember that 10 million years ago, the ocean wasn't here. It was uh, roughly around where Magic Mountain and New Hall is. And 10 million years ago, Ventura was under the ocean by about 500 feet. And through uh, plate tectonics and uh, the shifting of the continents, um, it had literally pushed the mountains up in Ventura. And you drive up, oh, say like uh, I-5, uh, the Grapevine area, and you can see where the bulldozers have cut the mount size of mountains away so the highways can go up through there. And you look at these mountains, you can see the strata, different layers of, of rock and, and whatnot. And, and what those are is um, these geological structures were formed millions of years ago. And it's through the dust and sand and silt that literally, literally rained down on the ceiling because the winds would, would you know, cause these, the dirts and dust that get in the air and it all rain down the ocean. And these take thousands of years to make these. And that's where you get the strata. And they all pile on top of each other, compressing each other and creating rock. It's called sandstone rock. And there's basically two different, really basically two different types of strata. There's a sandstone rock and then there's a shale layer. Shale layer takes a long, lot longer to make other than the sandstone. And what the shale layers consist of mostly is organic material. For example, like, like rivers. The rivers would flow into the ocean and, you know, the, the, there was a lot more vegetation and stuff like that back uh, 10 million years ago and whatnot. And um, so along with plankton, like these huge plankton blooms, and they would all die off and go to the bottom along with the organic material from the rivers. And s some of these would form in crevasses or the valleys in the ocean and they would fill up. And then on top of that would be the dust, sand, and silt creating the sandstone layers. And all this weight on top of each layer would cause heat and pressure and it would eventually turn it into what they call a hydrocarbon and a hydrocarbon is a precursor to crude oil. Uh, the entire coast of California has been uplifted by the, the, the dynamic forces of the continent. So for example you have one continent slipping underneath another segment and what it does it's like a carpet. It folds it up like that as, as the other continent dies underneath this continent. So you have all these strata here and what happens is the oil will come percolate up through here and be caught in the strata of the sandstone because the sandstone is very thick and very hard and, the, and that's where the oil pools and so then here we are present day that's where we drill and that's where we find the oil. And Gray Cavetti it puts us out very well in his interview. So I'd like to present to you Gray Cavetti. Fascinating. Great. Let's see it. You've lived in this town for 10 or 20 years, you've seen few changes. And if you've lived here, say, 60 years, you've seen a few more changes. More people, less farmlands, and more roads and highways. But during the next half hour, we're going to show you some changes that have taken place in this territory that will put all of those in the shade. Think about this. 10 million years ago, give or take a few hundred thousand. Beachfront property for the Pacific Ocean was located in New Hall, down by Magic Mountain. Now, what is now the coastal Southern California was probably 5,000 feet underneath the ocean. 
We're going to take a look at the geological happenings of this area, and here to tell us about 10 million years of history is our guest, Greg Cavett. Glad to have you with us, Greg. Thank you, Bill. What university did you graduate from? I graduated from the University of Southern California. You know, we've, we've all seen exposed layers of rocks in uh, highway cuts and uh, road cuts. Mm -hmm. How did they come about? Well, most of the time they were uh, created, especially around Ventura County, underwater by uh, sand and silt layering under the, under the ocean and later on they were compressed into rocks by uh, more sand and silt on top of them and by uh, heat and stresses. Now this would be sand that comes by erosion from off the banks and then it washes down into the ocean, right? Yes, most of it comes down rivers and uh, piles up near the mouth of the river and then something would trigger it like an earthquake or a large storm and send a load of sand across the sea floor. In between these sand loads comes uh, dust, particles from the air, and uh, general silt and dirt that settle down very slowly. All right, we have a little drawing here that shows a layering that you were talking about and our friendly fish. And you'll notice a blue and yellow. Could you tell us what we were talking about on that? Well, the blue would be representative of, say, a shale layer, which could be several thousand years to lay it down, mm -hmm. whereas the sand layer, which would be the yellow, uh, could have come down in the matter of a few hours, and uh, later they've been compressed into rock. The bottom ones on your chart there might be a little more solid than the ones on the top. Now in that blue, the shale, what would we find in that? Uh, in the shale, you'd find probably uh, remains of your fish's ancestors, mm -hmm. and uh, plankton and, oh, various pieces of, of uh, silt and clay uh, that would later become hydrocarbons and uh, eventually oil. They, now these layers look familiar, but how in the world they get in the mountains, Greg? Well, the uh, entire coast of Southern California has been uplifted during the last several million years and uh, most of the mountains that we see today were sent up by uh, faults near about their bases and uh, uh, say the mountains near Piru and Fillmore. There's a large fault running along the base of them that's, that shoved it up there due to some major crust, Earth's crust uh, movements. Uh, some compression in the Ventura Basin, it's compression mm -hmm. which shoves the crust up over itself and it erodes down to create what we see today as the hills and mountains. Now there's some kind of a theory about all of this that's in fairly recent in my mind uh, about the continents. And Does this have anything to do with that? Yes, this, uh, the Ventura Basin is a, a long narrow basin that was created uh, in reaction to the San Andreas Fault which is part of the, fits into the, this theory you mentioned of uh, plate tectonics. Uh, plate tectonics is a theory of uh, that all the continents were eventually were excuse me were uh, previously in uh, originally originally in, mm -hmm. in one large continent uh, called Gondwana land which uh, broke up into two and then later into three and four continents mm -hmm. by uh, continental drift which is another term for plate tectonics uh, these continents were uh, pushed around by uh, creation of n new sea floor which comes up along the ridges along the, the, uh, the mid-Atlantic and uh, uh, along the side of the Pacific and pushed the continents around to their present position today and uh, this has always been somewhat uh, postulated by the fit of South America uh, into Africa. Yeah. It looks like it came apart at one time. Yeah, looks great. And the St. Andreas then has had a part in this story, right? Yes, the, the San Andreas Fault is a large transform fault that uh, is moving the coastal part of Southern California towards the north in relation to the rest of the United States. And we have a picture of uh, 
Ventura County, part of LA, and you'll see a red yarn, and that is the line of the St. Andreas Fault. And the, next fo the next time that you folks are on the Antelope Valley Freeway, as you enter the valley almost to Palmdale and come to, uh, I think it's the last cut on your right hand side, and you'll get a glimpse of the San Andreas Fault. Look at the torture lines in that. Why do our Ventura Hills have so much oil? Well, due to this uh, San Andreas Fault action, it's caused some major compression around the Ventura Basin, which has resulted in a lot of faults and uh, many folds from the rocks, which don't quite fault, but they manage to act almost plastically and fold into anaclines and synclines, which, since the rocks we have here are sands and shales, uh, the sands, which can sometimes have oil in them, uh, the anticline, which is a domed upward structure, will uh, trap the uh, oil in the sandstone and keep it from running out, evaporating. All right, we're back to our friendly fish in the ocean again, and our first diagram of layering, and that moves on what you're talking about over a million mm -hmm. years, and you can see that this is beginning to pucker. Yeah, this is the beginning of the anticline. Uh, to, uh, this would be the start of our folding after the, rock, the sediments have become rock. And with further folding, we can end up with a picture like this. Yeah. When the uh, Ventura oil field was originally discovered, this was the general picture that they had of it. The cap rock, the blue, would be a shale, which is impermeable. The yellow layers would be a sand, which is fairly permeable and can contain oil and water. Now, you know, when we drive up to Santa Barbara, there are a number of those drilling platforms that just line right up at a certain point. Now, do they have any connection with the Ventura anticline? Yeah, they're the same, same anticline, same anticlinal trend that's over 30 miles long, uh, only a few thousand feet wide, but a very long linear feature along the northern part of our basin. <laughs> Runs right offshore. And you know, one of the last times we went to the beach, we came home with globs of tar on our feet and our hands and our clothing. Now, does this have any connection with this anticline? Not necessarily with this anticline. These, uh, the, the tar you speak of generally comes from uh, oil seeps and mm -hmm. fissures on the uh, ocean floor. And uh, since oil floats, it rises up. As, as the oil slowly seeps out, it rises up to the surface and particles wash onto the beach. Now what other surface evidence does a geologist look for when he's trying to locate an oil field? Well he'll uh, look for various things. Most of it would would be uh, structural mapping, uh, looking for indications in the dip of the beds at the surface that uh, down below the surface if you project down the the known thicknesses of the rock formations that you could find a trap in a formation that's that's buried where you're standing that might outcrop somewhere else. Uh, also the types of shales, you can analyze the shales and check into the uh, hydrocarbon content in the shales to see if there's a good source rock that could be compressed and heated by depth and create uh, liquid petroleum or gas. How do they find this oil? Now, let me try to phrase this. Is it in a, just a little pool underneath the surface of the ground or what is it in? How is it? Well, the oil is actually contained in a sandstone, usually, mm -hmm. or uh, in any kind of a rock that has porosity. Uh, in the Ventura Avenue oil field, for instance, it's, uh, it's contained in the sandstone layers between the shale layers. Uh, the oil was down below, originally, in deeper rocks squeezed out of the shales, and it migrated out, or migrated up the sandstone beds into the trap in the anticline from that lower reservoir and it goes we just happen to have a demonstration of that Greg okay. over here on the on our demonstration table we've poured some oil and we're talk Greg has been telling you about the what's that what's the name of that action where uh, the, the this, oil goes this is a, a little demonstration of capillary pressure um, you think of the sugar cube as a piece of sandstone. It, it's a very good analogy. It's uh, 
the, the grains of sugar about like grains of sand and the uh, oil is being sucked up into our sugar cube there by a uh, surficial pressure and this is just about how the oil is, is contained in the sandstone down under the ground. It isn't exactly in a big swimming pool. How about that? Well, we'll come back to our experiment in a few minutes, but we have another picture, and this is a picture of the Ventura anticline. Can you tell us just quickly, briefly again, what this anticline is? Okay, the anticline is a uh, series of rocks that's been folded up in a domal shape that, that mm -hmm. points upwards. A syncline is a dome that points downwards. The other way. Um, most anticlines have a syncline next to them because it, it all used to be flat. If you compress it, you end up with a, a zigzag shape. Mm -hmm. And uh, the oil would generally float on water. All these sands were laid down underwater originally in, uh, well, most of them in the Ventura Basin were. Yeah. And uh, the uh, water's already in the sandstone and once the hydrocarbon is generated into the sandstone, then it would uh, rise up towards the, the highest point that it could float on the water. Mm -hmm. Now this is one that the early, dev or not developers, but the people who located this anticline, this is what they saw. Yeah, this is the, uh, this is somewhere, uh, I believe this is up, up to the north going up the coast a little mm -hmm. ways, but this is the same structure that's, that actually continues all the way to uh, the river bottom area of Ventura and uh, is the Ventura Avenue oil field. We've told our viewers that our coastal cities used to be something like 5,000 feet under the ocean. Do we have any evidence that we could see today that would uh, tend to support that theory? Well, one easy piece of evidence that it was uh, at least underwater um, is the uh, terraces, terrace deposits you can see near Taylor Ranch at the, uh, the west end of Ventura. Uh, these uh, terraces, which you can see in kind of the, the tan strip at the base of the hills, were originally laid down underwater, but now they're uh, several meters above the water. Uh, the skyline there is, to the left of the skyline, is actually a terrace that's uh, tilted even more than the uh, one below it. and much higher up, up on the top of the hills, a couple hundred feet high. Uh, these terraces are originally laid down with only about a one or two degree slope to them as the sea pulls back. And uh, from the growth of the Ventura Avenue anticline just on shore, these have been raised up and tilted uh, varying degrees by uh, varying stands of sea level in the past. How long ago did our coast emerge from the ocean? The last emergence should be about 6,000 years ago mm -hmm. from the last uh, high stand of sea level. Mm -hmm. uh, and would this have been entirely caused by this uh, compression or were there, was there another factor that caused the elevation? Well, it was partially caused by uh, previous to 6,000 years ago was the end of the last ice age. Mm -hmm. So sea level really hasn't changed that much in the last 6,000 years. But the general coast of California during, uh, due to this uh, compression in the San Andreas Fault has been rising, which uh, lifts the, the uh, ground level further out of the water, even though the water stays stable at, at this point. I guess we've all collected seashells at the seashore, but you know, we've come across these up in the mountains, and this is what we talked about earlier. This first one, uh, a class of mine uh, picked this up in the um, Santa Clara Riverbed. And this one, the dark one, and maybe you can explain that dark one. It came from Piedra Blanca Creek. I was fishing. But why is it dark? Uh, it's a, a much more silicious shale with uh, a lot of uh, micas in it and uh, silicified uh, fossil fragments very old ones. Okay, and this came from Matillahawk Canyon. And I'm not sure where this came from. Yeah, it's a, uh, a plesopod that uh, looks something like out of the Pliocene age, say three, four million years ago. 
It's an undersized Pismo clam, isn't it? <laughs> it doesn't even look that much undersized. <laughs> it's pretty close. Mm -hmm. And this little piece of shell came from uh, one of the local canyons. Mm -hmm. And this is my prize. My son and I went for a hike on South Mountain. And about, oh, three or 400 feet, we came across a little beach the size of this coffee table. And there was this sand dollar. And the ants had used it as a cap for their uh, hole. There's a place for them to come out. And how old do you well, speculate that might be? Your, uh, your little beach was probably on the order of about uh, 20, 22 million years old, which is oh. now a, a sandstone layer called the Vaqueros Formation, wow. which uh, overlies the, the red rocks that you see around the basement, and, uh, around the Ventura Basin and in South Mountain. Uh, that's called the Sespe Formation. That's they, it was deposited. It's the beach that was deposited as a large, um, uh, large uplift caused uh, the the uh, ocean to regress and uh, leave behind a beach as it went. Okay. Now there must be, or is there rather, a special kind of fossil, or sea creature or whatever we want to call it, that makes these hydrocarbons? Is there any special kind? Uh, nothing really. Anything that's organic, that was living, uh, plankton, fish, dinosaurs like you mm -hmm. see on TV, mm -hmm. uh, can all create hydrocarbons that uh, eventually when they, when they break down and get blended into rocks and then uh, the rocks get compressed and generate um, liquid hydrocarbons, mm -hmm. or if mainly from plant matter, you can get uh, gas. You don't get liquid hydrocarbons. Up in the Sacramento Valley area, you get a lot of gas. That's, that, that's from plants? That's generally from plant now, matter. Now, how about the, the great state of Kansas? They have a lot of oil there, and that's a long ways from an ocean. How come? Hey, it used to be underwater, parts really? of it. Uh, uh, a lot of the rocks formations they produce out of are limestones back there, and uh, it's because a good good portion of the, the middle of the continent was under, under the water. And, but oil comes basically from the remains of sea creatures. Yeah, mo most of it would be uh, plankton, plankton and other, okay. uh, other little bugs that, uh, that the fish eat. All right, now I have one more question. I can remember as a youngster in around Montalvo, mm -hmm. in Joe McGrath's bean field, there was a mound, and that thing must have been, you know, 60, 60 feet high. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Mr. McGrath sold that to the state of California to make a freeway. Mm -hmm. Now, we've always speculated on how those mounds came. I, th I think there's another on Victoria, or half of one left mm -hmm. on Victoria, across from Kmart. Mm -hmm. How did those mounds get there? Well, those mounds are, uh, are a reflection, surface reflection, of what's left of, of what was probably a long hill that maybe went as far as South, south Mountain, but it's been eroded away in the meantime. They were uh, shoved up as a, as a small anticline. The one by Kmart was a very small anticline that was uh, uh, associated with the Oak Ridge Fault, which is a major fault runs up and down the uh, just about the center of the Ventura Basin. Mm -hmm. uh, the one over by, uh, by the freeway there is uh, uh, a reaction from uh, a fault that, pro small fault that, that fractured off of the major Oak Ridge Fault and uh, shoved up a little mound. And all we see now is, is a little roll in the hills. Mm -hmm. But that is bedrock rather than just stream gravels in those mounds. In detecting oil underneath the surface, I think we spoke originally that uh, folks drilled by the oil seeps. Mm -hmm. Now you are drilling, uh, well, what, three, four, five, six, seven, ten, twelve thousand feet. Mm -hmm. Tell me how you locate oil that far down. Well, uh much of that's done now by uh, geophysical means, mm -hmm. as well as from control data points that you have from wells that have already been drilled. Um, the geophysics, you've probably seen a couple trucks, series of trucks that were running up Wells Road and uh, Victoria not too long ago. The one with the wires and the little 
Right. Gadgets. Has a whole little series of wires and a whole little series of trucks with uh, set yeah. their bellies down on the ground and yeah. send some minor shock waves into the ground, which uh, will hit harder layers of rock or cer certain types of rock that will reflect back up these waves that are picked up by the uh, strings of uh, their little listening devices. Mm -hmm. Each one of those little dealies is a listening device mm -hmm. and that records the sound or the mm -hmm. echo, is that, yeah. would that be? It's, it's something akin to sonar, only it's mm -hmm. through the ground. Through the ground. You're sending shock waves through the ground and by laying out many of these uh, listening devices, they're called geophones. Okay. Makes sense. Geophones. Geology phones. And uh, they will give you a cross section of what the reflections are beneath you. And uh, with, with various data techniques of how fast sound or vibrations will travel through rocks, you can uh, extrapolate how deep these reflections would be from. Once you drill a well, then you know what the reflection was, and you can go from there. And, uh, see that you see your rollovers, you can see a hidden anticline or syncline, a hidden fault that doesn't make it to the surface nowadays because it's been covered up by stream gravels. Okay. You know, you brought two samples of oil, and I think this would be a good time to show it. This came from... Yeah, probably let's look at the other one first. You want to look at the other one first? Yeah. All right. Yeah, this is a, a good sample of uh, crude oil. You can see it's... Uh, very light, almost looks like dirty gasoline. Uh, this is 32 gravity oil from the uh, some of the deeper formations mm -hmm. in the Ventura Avenue oil field. But this is a very high quality oil with a lot of gas that's associated with it. See it uh, will coat the jar right up and in a matter of a couple of minutes it'll run down mm -hmm. and your jar will be uh, clear again. Clear again. It's ver very light, lighter, much lighter than water. Huh. Okay. That's the good stuff. Good stuff. In comparison, this is a, a bit of the stuff from uh, Sam Santa Maria, which is much thicker oil that you uh, have to steam to get it out. And it's uh, so much thicker that you don't really have to worry about having it <laughs> in a jar. And uh, it's very solid. <laughs> you could pave roads with that. That's about all they used it for uh, <laughs> many years ago. Not that many years ago. But uh, nowadays they have much better methods of refining and they can get uh, various lower grade fuels, but fuels out of it. Yeah. That's great. I have one more thing. You, our sugar cube is working up into the second cube and this is... Put it over there. You want to put it over here? All yeah, right. You can make your analogy over there. There you are. This rock right here, tell us what that is, Greg. Well, that's uh, an oil sand, an actual oil sand that outcrops uh, uh, from a formation a little older than, than the, that's produced in Ventura Avenue, but it's out of the Monterey formation that's uh, produced out of many of the oil fields in, around Ojai and uh, Piru in that area. And that that's exactly... Uh, what our analogy is showing is uh, that's a sandstone rather than a sugar cube and it's full of oil that it is ev evaporated away into tar at this point since right. it's been exposed to the air mm -hmm. but uh, underground and under pressure and temperature that's uh, what we get our oil out of. With all your faults and fissures Greg I want to thank you for being with us thank you very much it's been an uplifting program We've covered 10 million years, more or less, in 30 minutes. Time sure flies when you're having fun. Thank you for being with us. Come back.